how can we grow a love of scientific inquiry and how can we make sure science is still asking good questions? So I want to welcome to the stage two people that really make me remember why I love science. Uh, the hosts of the popular YouTube channel ASAP Science, Mitch Moffat and Greg Brown. <laughs> Hello. Oh, here. Oh, here. I'll sit over oh, yeah. Here. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are the divisive ones here. Yeah. I know. We're I'm separated. Also, I know. I'm like, Mitch, I'm like, yeah. I want to start with a quote. You guys told me that your channel is the gateway drug to critical thought. Please explain. Well, for us, yeah, we, we like to act like we just want to get people really interested in science and critical thought and learning. And so we always think about our videos that we make online as an opportunity to cross someone's path to sort of impact them where they're already learning. So if you are curious about how coffee affects your brain, that's our chance to actually teach you the science behind that. If you're curious about how much sleep you actually need and you're wondering that already, we'll ask that question and then uh, impart the science behind it. So in that way, we like to think, you know, it's like putting the peas in the mashed potatoes or in the, in the gravy, a chance to just trick you into learning science. <laughs> it, yeah, and we also always try and explain how we don't want people to think that we just know everything when we make these videos. We do a lot of research, we explain the studies in the videos, and we understand that science is going to evolve with time, and we do hope that in the future, our videos, we're going to have to go back and be like, that was wrong, because things have changed. And so, yeah, we want people to think that, not just to take the information at face value, but to know it's about thinking about the world around you critically. As a science communicator, I'm always curious to know, how do you know what the length of the video should be? What's the attention span people have for science and facts? How many facts can you throw in in three minutes and hope that people absorb it? Yeah, no, that's interesting. I think that for us, what we try and do is make sure that everything is as interesting as possible. And if that means it has to be 10 minutes or 20 minutes or three minutes, that can inform itself based on the information. But our videos are shorter. They're really kinetic. They're animated. So in many yeah. ways, they're very, you like know, you internet <laughs> age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, for yeah. sure. But no, we have longer videos that people do stick around for, and it all depends on the information you're giving. You don't just want to... It seems like a lot of science communication and sometimes, like, science TV shows, it's like they're filling time. And so that's what right. we really wanted to eliminate. Like, how, just do you, how do you pick your topics? Um, when we first started, it was based off of what we had learned in university, what we thought was interesting, and we're explaining to our friends like that hangovers. weren't scientists. <laughs> and then they were also like, oh, yeah, I want to understand why. I get drunk when I drink alcohol. Um, but then from there, it just sort of evolved into questions our audience would ask us. We would always say, like, hey, suggest things for us to, to tackle and to look into, and also things in pop culture. So we like to try and find that crossover between, hey, this is happening in the world. Maybe it's a chance for you to be curious about the science behind it. I have a follow-up question to that. You talked about science as the gateway drug to critical, or your, your videos as the gateway drug to critical thought. So if science is, the, is critical thought, what does Deepak do? I ask, who has the thought? <laughs> what wants to know? So science is about knowing the world, and spirituality is self-awareness. Who's asking the question? So they're not contradictory. They're not in conflict. Science is about the observed, and spirituality is about that which is observing. That's it. What do you guys make of that? Yeah, I guess, yeah, I think when it comes to us and, like, things like spirituality and science, like, I think that there's a way for them to intersect, and I totally agree with what you are saying in some ways, but I don't know. I think it's hard for us when we talk about, like, science, and in our videos, we don't talk very often about spirituality, but we do try and, we try and explain to people that we want them to be observing the world around them in a critical way. We want them to be thinking about things like religion in a critical way and if that's if we are, but we aren't going to come out and necessarily say that you have to believe it yeah because Michael, the world it, you yeah. use the word facts everybody uses the word facts facts are a species specific mode of knowing and experience in consciousness if you look at the universe 99.99 percent of it is not empirical it's sub empirical yeah but we we, we live in the 0.01 percent of facts and there are really are alternative facts that are not true. We can tell oh, yeah. the difference. I you agree. agree I this. agree in that. Yeah. I mean, that's the good service that science is but doing. I wanted to, uh, but we are uh, talking about what is fundamental truth. So one of, one of your, I think your most popular video, the one on God, which I watch because I'm interested in this subject. But I mean, you do stuff, you know, how coffee affects the brain. Okay. But at some point, you're going to intersect with, you know, like global warming and climate change and politics or science and religion and God. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, now you're going to get some pushback, I'm guessing. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's always interesting because, you know, in, in our videos that are just about coffee, no one disagrees. They're like, oh, yeah, for sure. You guys know exactly what you're talking about. But then as soon as you add in a mix of something that might be controversial or even if it shouldn't be like climate change, suddenly those same people that believe you in everything else you say are like, no, 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 you're, you're lying now. And so that's always been an interesting thing for us to see. Like, hey, we made this video the exact same way we do all our other videos with the same types of research we do with the same types of peer reviewed journals. So it is a, an interesting moment when we're like, why is there such a disconnect now over these sets of facts? Yeah, and I think that we do like do feel that people need to know that science is political. A lot of science funding comes from politicians. And so it is, if those politicians don't believe in climate change, that's a big issue. So we are also a strong proponent of making sure people realize that we aren't just trying to not be political when we're making science videos and that we do understand the importance of making sure we speak out and not just talk about coffee, for example. <laughs> I mean, do you suspect that it has something to do with you're, you're touching on somebody's moral foundation or their deep beliefs about politics, ideology, economics, or whatever? And it's not really about climate change. It's really about, you know, I believe in free markets and uh, open industry and small government, and if, and, and if you guys are going to insist climate change is real, then maybe the government's going to come in and do something I don't like. Or religion, you know, if, uh, you know, just some point about evolution that who cares, DNA, RNA, whatever, Oh, but wait a minute, I have to give up my religion to accept yeah. the evolution stuff? Right. Then you're going to hit that wall. And yeah. one question about science, it's often taxpayer funded. How can we make sure science is asking good questions? Well, that's why we talk a lot about diversity in science. I think that we feel like there's also this, another lot of pushback that we get is that people think that science is not biased or like, you know, it can't be biased and like, when people do science, they're usually starting from a place that they know. And so if you have the same types of people always doing the same types of research about like their own experience, it's not going to evolve. So one thing that we always want to talk about is like we're queer scientists. Like there needs to be different types of people involved in science. And it can't be the same way that people have looked throughout the history of science, which it has been. It is not immune to making a lot of mistakes in that way. So I think asking the right questions has a lot to do with diversity. We're a strong proponent of that. And we do see the way that science has been used in a very negative way throughout history, and that needs to change. Well, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> We're going to watch a clip now that touches on the topic of climate change. But before we do, can we get a round of applause for ASAP Science? Hey, ASAP Science. We love you guys. Good. Very good. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.